Racing takes place out at the Vol on Thursday, the 11th of April, 2024. An eight-race program with race number one set to get underway at 12.45. It is a work riders meeting uh, with a work riders race day. And um, joining me on the line is Alistair Cohen. And uh, Alistair, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks, Raheel. Um, obviously, on the back of Saturday and leading up towards uh, another good weekend, although no feature races on the South African calendar coming up this weekend. I think we've still got some uh, some good stuff to come, just uh, looking around and shopping around leading up to the weekend. So hopefully we can uh, set things up nicely. As you mentioned, this is Work Riders Day. I've done my fair share of Work Riders meetings around the half -out. They are good fun. Obviously, the Work Riders bring their family and friends, so it becomes uh, a little bit of an enthusiastic vibe. And, um, yeah, a lovely chance for the work riders to, sh to strut their stuff, show what they're all about. There are obviously some work riders that are simply better than others. That uh, could be the, the fair angle to take from a punting perspective on this race meeting. But um, yeah, looking forward to it all the same. Well, let's get straight into it. Race number one will be the start of the bipod, and uh, this will be run over the 1,000 meter trip. Delphi Dancer is the favorite at 15 to 10. It's 18 to 10 about the first time we offered the light. Belis Savar is at 22 to 10, and then it's 14 to 1 and better ball those. Now, this was Delphi Dancer made a big improvement returning off a lengthy layoff last time out when running third behind Inconla Gold and that was in a work rider race. But uh, this, um, this filly off of the light wouldn't need to be too special to win on debut for uh, Fabian Habib and uh, Tapiso Matswele. I think those are two of the three horses to focus on, the other one being number nine, Belissa Va and the Pelicida Moncawa. Um, but high number draws look like they will be suited with the outside rail set at zero on the original track. Obviously on Tuesday, racing was supposed to be on the, the main track as well, but it was moved to the classic track. I see the forecast is for much drier conditions leading up, so we should have no issues and no um, diversions here. Delphi Dancer, a chance, good chance. Goodman Dadamasi rode her last time. I always think that's vital that a work rider gets a good feel under race day conditions. Um, was on what was perceived to be the wrong side of the track on that occasion. Stayed on fairly well behind in Kandler Gold. So I think that she'll go very nicely in the first race on the card. Um, the other two also seven off of the lap. Obviously the, the big uh, tick in the box as well, Brett. Informed jockey, informed trainer. There's a lot to like about off of the lap genetically. It's not beyond Fabian Habib to run a smart uh, debutant in the work riders ranks as well. So just watch the market on her. If it speaks positively, then she will take all the beating. And I think the Madame Belissevar has got something to come. She's run with two crack, or certainly two better two-year-olds than what she faces here. Um, Pelicina McClough arrives for Tony Peter off a break. Um, I'd expect her to run her best race. So those are the likely winners for me. Numbers 1, 7 and 9. How oh, the market have them? Delphi Dancer off of the light and Belissevar, the three likely uh, contenders for that top position. We're going to move along to race number 2. The start of the place accumulator. 20 past 1 is the off time. Work riders made in plate over the 1200 meter trip. And uh, having a look at uh, the fixed odds betting market for race number two, your favorite is number two, Trombatista at 15 to 10, Parlor Millions at 22 to 10, Oklahoma Twister is at 15 to 2, it's 17 to 2, trip to states, and then it's 12 to 1, and better ball those. Now, uh, Trombatista he was uh, carded to run, I think it was a couple weeks back, but uh, was scratched, and he's uh, he takes his place here, and on the back of his latest out in when running fourth behind Al Bayrek, that should be good enough to uh, see him in with a, a solid chance and, and probably get in the job done here. Yeah, he was backed off the boards, or not off the boards, but he was certainly the subject of support at his most recent start, having finished four lengths to Al Bayrek, coming in from 20 to 1, down to 7 to 1, on the back of a layoff. He's obviously been sparing the race, so I doubt he's been the easiest to get in shape for races, number two, Trom Batista. I make him a runner, there are a few that I make a runner, but the horse that I'm going to take a big, big stab at here is number four, Oklahoma Twister. I thought he'd be at a bigger price than what, uh, what you've quoted. The blinkers come off, I don't know if they made all that difference. I think the bad run last time was just due to the fact that he didn't stay. His best run came over this trip, over this course and distance even, having finished second to John Wick under one Tom Lukele, who rides again. In fact, his two best runs have come under Tom Lukele. So, and I think the odds horses are going well. Raining Rubies has turned the corner. Another nice run on, on Tuesday at the Vol. Um, I think number four, Oklahoma Twister, definitely represents the value in the opening leg of the PO. So put him into everything. Um, obviously, number one, Parler Millions can't be totally ignored either. He's got an outside draw and a very good work ride in the form of Anati Fenny, who was uh, one of Mike DeCock's main work riders. 
And number 12, Spa Story, I think, has scope to improve. Whether it's enough improvement to, to threaten whoever wins the race, I don't know. But I think he can improve and, and earn a stake check here. But uh, this race, for me, revolves around number four, Oklahoma Twister, with winning chances for one and two. It could be a nice find there from Alistair Horse, number four, Oklahoma Twister, at around 15 to two in the market. And uh, this horse could just run a big race in the second race. Moving along to race number three, which will be the start of uh, the pick six. Uh, 13.55 is the off time. And um, this is a maiden plate for the Phillies and Mares. Intro, your narrow favourite at 13 to 10. Red Cherry Lane is at 15 to 10. 7 to 1 about Eve's Apple. 7 to 1 Altimissimo. It's 8 to 1. And better bar those. Now, the two-year-olds um, will certainly have a, a strong say in this contest. You've got Intro, who is the favourite, a two-year-old daughter of Bezrin. And... Uh, Tom Lukele takes her idea. Finished fifth last time out behind Queen of Fire. But uh, this daughter of Vincent Getrix from the Sean Terry Yard has got to be of, uh, of huge interest. Sure, Raheel, if she has a leg in every corner, she'll win. The form on on display here is not pretty. When you look at the form of number two together again, and she makes some sort of appeal in a race like this, and she's a 25 start maiden and hasn't even run second in her life, that shows the depth and the, the lack of depth in this race. I suppose of those that have race, number eight intro does make the most appeal under Tom Lukele for St. John Gray. Uh, St. John now uses a sixth different jockey on this daughter of Bezman, which uh, would not be beyond St. John. And she's got reasonable pieces of form to her name. And in a, in a race of this caliber, she should go quite close to winning. In fact, she just looks the right one on paper. But number seven, Red Cherry Lane, like I said, if she's got a leg in any, every corner, if she's got any amount of ability, even 50% sort of average ability I think that she could uh, take all the beating here. the one concern and and I remember Sean Terry had also called Wendy Wood who won the Will Evington who made her debut as a three year old at around the same time and I'm not for one moment saying that she's going to go and do what Wendy Wood did it's likely very impossible but Sean wouldn't get a, a horse started at this stage of that three year old career without a good reason I don't know what the reason was with Wendy Wood the points I'm making with Wendy Wood is that she at least went on and did something and proved that whatever set her back and whatever slow start she had to her career um, was made up for but Sean would not run a three-year-old at the stage of their career or this stage of their three-year-old campaign without good reason so that is a little bit of a concern a little bit of a worry but like I said if she has a leg in every corner she should win the race if I can remember correctly was Redberry Lane not trained by Sean Terry as well as Alistair Red, Redberry Lane, yeah, I was going to get, well, well, thank you for reminding me. Um, that is a famous Lammers Kral family. Sean Terry did train Redberry Lane. Um, this has got a lot of famous names from the Lammers Kral bloodline. I think Yard Armour is in the pedigree as well. So, so various big names in there. And um, I think she also got a little bit of black top at Redberry Lane. Yeah, she's definitely the horse that uh, we need to keep an eye on here. Number seven, Red Cherry Lane from the Sean Terry Yard. 15 to 10, if she's got any amount of ability, she should be hard to beat in race number three. Race number four, which will be uh, the start of uh, Jackpot 1. And this is uh, set to be around over the 1,000 meter trip. It is a classified stakes. Half past two is the off time. Favourite, Red Carpet Girl, 16 to 10. Lulu's Boy, 28 to 10. And Candler Gold, is at uh, 11 to 2. JJ's Eagle 11 to 2. It's then uh, 15 to 2. And better ball those. Now, race number four, what's your thoughts on this contest? Red Carpet Girl, the horse for you on the back of uh, a comfortable win last time out? She's one of the horses for me. The suggested bet on this card is Jackpot 1. And I've gone with more than half the field. So Dees would tell me you've got to go field. Um, but I've gone with five horses here. They are 1, 2, 4, 5 and 9. With Red Carpet Girl being my top choice with a very um, a narrow persuasion towards her. This is a classified stakes. One of two non-maiden events on the card. Classified stakes famously do suit fillies and mares because they do get a, a sex allowance. And on the back of her last win, which was... Easily her career best. She should go well. Alex Sitez will take Sarad for Farney Broncos. Um, Alex is actually my wife's main work rider, so uh, I know him quite well. He's battling to get that win under the belt. He, uh, he has had a few wins in his career, but lately I think confidence is a little bit on the low side. So I'd love to see him get into the number one box, and he's got a good opportunity here um, from Farney Broncos. The win last time from Red Carpet Girl, like I said, was her career best. There was a lot in her favour. She was drawn towards the outside down the turpentine stand side track, but she still disposed of the field in good style. She came away 
away with that with a seven pound penalty which is likely justified considering her confirmed improvement from her penultimate start and off bottom weight with, uh, with a genuine and uh, perhaps generous um, advantage from uh, from a sex allowance she is at the top of my pile. But number one, Lulu's boy, I think, is capable. Needed the penultimate start. Came to laugh at his last start. Um, he'll go well enough. Number two, after hours, I think it's pretty much in the same boat as Lulu's boy. I mean, they're both well performed. They've both kind of looked like they've lost their way a little bit of late. But after hours, again, likely needed that last run. Showed a lot of pace. Fell in a hole. I think he'll be better for that run. I think that if he was at his best, he'll take all the beating here, number two, after hours. But it just doesn't quite look like he's at his best. But I'll keep it open-ended for him to get somewhere near. Um, for Super Agra, he was once an 86. He's down to a 68 by virtue of that. He's going to come into the reckoning. Jarpy Bessel takes the ride. He's a, a famous stalwart of Corey Lindsay from Kimberley. Does absolutely love Jarpy. He's a wonderful conversation. Um, and uh, yeah, he'd be a great interview if, if Super Agra were to win. And number five, JJ's Eagle under Tom Lukele for Heinrich van der Verstehen. Another horse that you can't let run loose. But ultimate start to Elysia's love looks a lot better after Tuesday's racing. Yeah, it is quite a trappy contest race number four in the race where I would not be surprised if you were to get a bit of a train smash result in those exotics. And um, as you heard from Alistair, he's gone with more than half the field. So maybe best to uh, include the entire field and, and hope for a result that uh, could play in uh, your hands. So moving along to race number five, which will be the start of jackpot two. Work riders maiden plates, 1800 meters a trip. Five past uh, three is the off time. And uh, having a look at the market for race number five, your favorite chair is in a blue moon at uh, 33 to 10, Caliburn at 33 to 10, Al Akta is at 9 to 2, Master TikTok 5 to 1, Pomo Clapper 6 to 1, and then it is 7 to 1, and better about those. Now, uh, this horse, uh, Caliburn, he seems to be uh, getting closer, and I think this, this could be the ideal opportunity for him. Uh, to get the job done because uh, he's met some uh, some decent sorts in his recent starts and given that he now runs in a work riders race i think that uh, he could be ideally placed here from uh, Fra Fani broncos who of course finished the VAR meeting on Tuesday with a double, including Count Your Chances, who I really liked in race number seven. So uh, that was some good news. Yeah, Caliburn's one of three horses that I think have a good winning chance here. Siobonga and Tembu takes a ride. You might remember him as an apprentice called Siobonga Duma, him and his brother Sanele. Don't know where Sanele is, but Siobonga is still in full swing. Um, I don't think he quite got home over 2,000 metres at his last start, and I think this is close to a, a happy place for the son of Quirari. I'd probably prefer a mile, to be honest, but I think this race is probably coming at the right time for Caliburn. He finishes off his races generally quite well. And I think that he's one of those uh, one of those horses who's got to have a good chance. One in a blue moon. If you look at the Volta Fast Run, in a blue moon's got about half the field held here. Pomo Clapper Al Akhtar, which is probably worth a second glance. Russian Lotus and Kani Mambo. So I'm gonna make a case that Inner Blue Moon was unlucky at his penultimate start not to have beaten Volta Fuss and he'd probably keep all those horses who he beat on that occasion at bay like you heard a lot the Vale is deadly to piece of Matsuele takes the route so he'd just be my top choice although with no degree of confidence and I think number six Agamemnon having run in a handicap last time look he's not very good as Agamemnon but a nine start maiden with Pelasila Makawa on board he's likely to go up to the front and uh, if he steals it um, then he's won the race, so he might he might take the chance of catching them napping. Yes. It's probably of all the maidens on the card, it's probably the race that excites me most. To be honest, but I think there's quite a lot of tactical elements about it. Yeah, it certainly uh, sets up to be quite an interesting contest race number five, and uh, perhaps a horse like Agamemnon at seven to one in the market after being a. Uh, Frustrating and a bit uh, costly to follow for his uh, supporters. Maybe he could uh, run a huge race and get the job done on a Thursday in the fifth race. But uh, a horse like Caliburn could just be uh, nicely set up here to uh, shed his maiden tag. Moving along to race number six, a uh, work rider's maiden plate for fillies and mares, 1600 meters the distance, 1540 is the off time. City Lights, three to one. Incredible in Ronnie at uh, three to one. Performers at seven to two. Sensoria 5 to 1, and then it's 8 to 1, and better ball those. Now, uh, last time out, City Light just found a. I think it's. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name. You can you can give it a, a go there, Alistair. But uh, City Light found that fully too good, and uh, I think uh, if you if you take that fully out the race, she seemed to be uh, quite clear of uh, of the third place horse. So I think she could obviously uh, run a huge race, and then you've got a horse like Perform who 
got close last time out behind Springer, but she doesn't seem to be the most consistent uh, sort around. And then this uh, fully incredible Indrani from uh, Fabian Abibyard, she ran behind Sait with Roses last time out, so she's obviously open to improvement. But I think between numbers 1 and 10, we could likely see our winner. And I've got uh, number 12, Sensori, in the play as well. I think number 10, Incredible Androni, is the horse to beat here. He'll appear on Matsuela. Said his name a few times on this preview already. Rides for Fabian Habib. Uh, Headgear goes on for the first time. As you can tell by her running style, she's probably not the easiest to contain. She's probably a bit enthusiastic and hoping that the uh, the headgear just helps her drop her head and uh, and relax and travel a lot better. Um, run behind two Stuart Pettigrew horses um, in two starts. And I reckon if you ask Stuart, the difference between Green Bubble and said with roses. I think you'd tell you that said with roses is, uh, is many divisions better than green bubbles. Um, so I'd actually say that her last run was better than her first run, although lengthwise it might not suggest that, uh, considering that said with roses won with a lot in hand. Um, so I think incredible and Ronnie's improving. She's she's on an upward trajectory, and um, she would be my vote in this race. The reason why number one City Lights is not my top choice, despite having her in my pick six or my jackpot as well, is. As you mentioned, last one behind Suter, that was absolute domination from the winner. And there, there wasn't much to get excited about in behind. She's a 13-time maiden. You know, she's going to get the job done. She's banging at the door. She probably deserves her day in the sun. Her run to Frances Ethel once upon a time, although Frances Ethel was a, a totally different horse then to what she is now. But the point is that run does catch the eye. Alexi Terzo takes her out for Fanny Bronco. She's alive, number one, City Lights, but I'd rather go with the improver over the horse that's well and truly established. And then number 12, Sensoria, showed very good improvement last time with the blinkers. It's not going to be easy running down the Vile straight over a mile as a two-year-old. That is, that's expert level, but Tom Lukele rides for Yanni Borman, and she's just run with better progressive two-year-olds, and it's not impossible this time of year for two-year-olds to beat their, their older rivals. So 12, Sensoria just gets a little tick in her box, and I put her cheekily into the jackpot. Yeah, she could be a nice find here in race number six at around five to one in the market to... Uh beat uh, the two, uh, the three more fancied runners, numbers one, four and ten. And if she does arrive, well, you're certainly going to be dropping quite a lot of tickets in race number six. Race number seven next up, this is uh, an MR68 handicap, 1600 meters the trip, quarter past four is the off time. And uh, your favorite here, shortest price favorite on the day is uh, Viva de Janeiro at eight to 10, 22 to 10 about his master's voice. It's Tambi at uh, 17 to two. And then it's 10 to 1 and better by those. Now, uh, Viva de Janeiro, he, uh, he obviously won a nice race last time out beating Green Scepter. He was a, a comprehensive winner. He's gone up eight points for that victory. But uh, in this race, is he a banker in all bets for you? No, but he's my top choice. The self-proclaimed champion of the world, Goodman Dadamasi, takes a ride for Farney Broncos to... Sounds like he's going to have the week of his life here. And the son of Oratorio won with contempt, as you mentioned last time, beating Green Scepter. But Green Scepter's run again, and he's Green Scepter after all. So, But how much better is he taking on here? Not much better. So all that's got to count in number three, Viva de Janeiro's favour. But I liked the win of his master's voice last time. And I think the key to his master's voice is that with all the rain around Joburg and work being at a premium, we know having run seven days ago, he's a fit horse. He beat Gilda Gray, Tapiso Matsuwele rides for Mark Kahn. Um, I think number four, his master's voice has just defaulted to having a better chance than, than, than ordinary. He's going to run under a penalty. He has to take note of that. Um, but I think that, that he's just one keeping an eye on number four, his master's voice. And then number two, Putin's promise. I'm actually mildly encouraged with his horse. The rating has come down another two pounds. It's been a long time since he won, a very, very long time since he won. But I was at Turfentine when he last ran behind run for cover. And weirdly he caught my eye it might not look like it looked like he stayed on in the Muzi and yeah I think that's the key that Muzi also rode him last time so Muzi might be seeing the same thing that I'm seeing um, the blinkers come off I mean, Kobus Roo is a shrewdy, um, and he's drawn towards the outside, which is also going to be in his favour. I don't know if he can beat Viva de Janeiro. I don't know if he can beat his master's voice, but there's my trifecta quartet moneymaker, number two, Putin's promise. Do not let him run loose. He's going to be, he's, whatever he is, he's the wrong price, and he represents definite place value. Well, he's 20 to 1 in the market, and your fancy, count your chances, did win from that form line just yesterday. So that form line has been franked, and uh, it uh, certainly uh, does bode well for number two, Putin's promise, running a bigger 
race in race number seven at 20 to one in the market. He's a must inclusion in all bets. Race number eight, which will be the final race on the day. Maiden played 1600 meters, a trip 1650 is the off time. And uh, your favorite here is number one, Breath of Magic, along with number four, Pike Place, both at 22 to 10. Hat Furious, nine to two, that's one support from six to one. It's then uh, 17 to two and better ball those. Now, uh, Alistair, what's your thoughts on race number eight? Is it a field race? I don't know if we need to go field, but there's some horses here that just don't have many claims here. You probably wouldn't want to let them run loose. I'll tell you one horse that interests me, and I don't know if he can win, but I expect improvement. Number 10, Douglas Dragon. Jin struck, Blinker struck, and got one of the premier work riders on board. So there's, there's no real case I can make for him other than that. But uh, 30 years ago, that would have pricked a lot of ears. Uh, Blinker struck, the gin strike, and, and getting the service of Tapisa Matsuela on Work Riders Day. So put him into your trifectas and quartets. Um, number one, Breath of Magic is my, my top choice here. Goodman Dadamasi rides for Fani Broncos. They're Fani again, unbelievable. Um, he just looks the next horse off the conveyor belt. It's as simple as that. Um, I think that he's got the best credentials in this race. He's exposed after all. He's a 22 start maiden. But there's little else going on in this race. I mean, I do respect the, the supporter, like number two, Hat Furious, who holds number three, Global Reef. So I'd expect that to hold sway. Four Pike Place, 15 start made and I think that he's even though he beat uh, Breath of Magic in the Volta Fuss run, I think that he's he is what he is. The Shoal Kruger takes her out. Be lovely to see her get into the number one box. And then I'm an Chieftain Shield. I think this is the horse that's probably got the most scope to improve. Um, he is related to French Navy. He's a half brother to French Navy, the son of Verse and Getrix. Uh, Chamo Mabai arrives for Mike de Kock. Two very ordinary runs, but I think that there could be a little bit of momentum behind the son of Verse and Getrix to also run a better race. So one Breath of Magic, my top choice, but uh, my traffic to Cortez inclusion number 10 Douglas Dragon but that's more out of uh, perhaps desperation rather than, than having any concrete evidence to him running a better race yeah you found some uh, two uh, two decent uh, 20 to 1 shots in the final two races on uh, the program uh, program and if if they arrive Alistair I hope to see you in that uh, winner's queue for that pick six yeah, I think it might be worth taking a stab on, on some of the exotics today on this Thursday card. Um, you know, work riders race meetings can be a little bit intimidating at times. Um, and obviously the lack of quality throughout the race meeting is evident because the, the highest quality races are classified stakes. So from all those perspectives, it's it's difficult to to take a big budget into this type of race meeting but it can be very very rewarding i know a lot of uh, a lot of well-known tipsters and punters have read these cards very very nicely in the past and have left with good money well you could have uh, done just that and um, could have guided the guys in the right direction but uh, let's move along to the suggested bet now and you can take us through your suggested bet for the meeting on thursday with race number one set to get underway at 12 45 alistair take it away it's jackpot one at 2.30 and starts in race number four. My numbers are one, two, four, five, and nine on the first leg. So Lulu's boy after our super agri, JJ's eagle and red carpet girl. Second leg gone one, three, and six. Inner Blue Moon, Caliburn, and Agamemnon. Then the third leg, which is race six, got number one, City Lights, 10, Credible and Drani, and 12, Sensoria. And then the final leg gone two, Putin's Promise, who's my undoubted value in that race. Three, Viva de Janeiro, four, his master's voice. And I've actually included number six on Petit Pat, who I think coming out fresh will run a reasonable race, although likely needing it. Um, so that's my play, and then I'm going to take a little cheeky place double. The last two races, Putin's promise onto Douglas Dragon. Yes, that could certainly be some nice, uh, a nice bet uh, to round off your day out at the Vol on Thursday. Alistair, thanks very much for your time. All the best. Enjoy the rest of your week. Cheers, the Hill. Always a pleasure. Great catching up, and uh, likewise to you and all the punters and all the viewers. Uh, have a good one. Thanks very much to Alistair Cohen. All the best with racing art at the Vol on Thursday.